And now for the data object grid view. If we want to see a particular grid view, we can click on a folder or we can click here on home. If you click on home and you have multiple uh, types of objects here, you would first have to select a type. Uh, for example, the test, and then it will show you only the test objects. Also, any grid configurations that you add will be directly linked to the folder that you're viewing it from. So for now, I would advise that you click on directly on the folder which you want to configure the grid view on. And in my case, it will be the test objects folder. Now you can see that we have the paths for all of our objects, the IDs, is it published or not, the creation date, modification date. Now, for example, if we wanted to change what's actually shown within the grid view, now let's say I don't need the modification date if it's published, don't necessarily need the path either. I'm going to keep uh, the creation date. Now let's, for example, you wanted to show some kind of a uh, field from your object. You would just drag and drop it here. And let's say we wanted to show the checkbox as well. We can click on just apply quick note. If you don't click on save, uh, sorry, if you don't click on save, copy and share, uh, one thing that will happen is that if you refresh the page or go back to your folder, you will not have this configuration anymore. So I'm just going to type in test and I'm going to also put the checkbox here for uh, save as set as favorite. The only reason for that being is if you set a particular configuration for that folder as your favorite by default, it will be open here as well. You can see that you have the option. If you already configured uh, your whole grid, you can share this configuration with another user. You can sh share it with everyone or within a particular role. Also, you can add descriptions, uh, well, a description for this particular grid configuration. So I'm going to click on save and share. And now if I click here, you can see that down here we have a test grid configuration. A cool thing that you can do within the grid configuration as well is that you can change certain uh, values for fields directly. So if I were to, let's say, save this and refresh it. Now my grid configuration changed one second. And there you go. You can see that it is not checked anymore. You can also do the, the same thing with these input fields. I'm just going to do one quick thing and that is go to my classes, go to the test object just want to show you uh, also a cool thing that we can do. Let's call this first name and add another text input and call it last name. So we're going to add two new fields. Let's go to one of our objects and type in Ivan and Yavorovich. Click on save go back here, uh, refresh it. Let me just see something. I'm just going to uh, set as favorite again. And let me just refresh it. Yeah, okay, there we go. Now it's working. Okay, now we can go back to our grid options. Now we have the first and the last name options here. We can put in the first and the last name, click apply. Now you can see that we have uh, both of them here, but we can also technically combine them here in the transformers. Uh, we have the operator concatter. If I said that correctly, you can drag and drop him here. The glue between between our first and last name will just be an enter and click apply. And now if we drag and drop this and this, we can see that it is now combined. You can also edit this and call it a full name so that the name of the column will actually be called full name. Click apply. And now you can see 
that we have a new column called full name that combines the first and last names. Here over the columns, you have the option to filter out the items that you get. This really depends on your needs. You can just turn off the filter if you don't need to use it anymore. The options for the filtering also depends on the type of the field that you're using. Here, you'll notice that I don't have the option to filter out this data. The reason for that being is that this is not a normal column within the database. We don't have a column called full name within the database. This is format data that we uh, formatted using one of the grid configurators. So that's not going, going to work. We have a lot of different formatters, like let's say the operator date formatter, which you can use to format a particular date. Now, for example, I'm going to use a day, month, year, and we we want the hours and uh, the minutes. Click on OK. Uh, yeah, I drag and dropped it at the wrong place, and I can use this creation date and put it under it. And now you can see that we have this um, formatted. Don't click uh, click on the save and share just to be sure that you don't lose uh, your data. And now you can see that we have a new column. Uh, let me just uh, rename this. Oh, we can't rename it. You can put it under under a either a transformer that doesn't basically do anything. And then you can uh, rename it, put a new new label over it here. You can basically create or put in your custom query. So if, for example, for some reason you wanted to filter out those that aren't checked without using this filter, you could, in theory, type in, let me just see, the name of this field uh, is test checkbox. So that's the name of the column that's going to be within the database. And I'm just going to type in test um, test checkbox equals true. And if I click on enter, you'll see that I'll only get uh, that result. Or for example, if we wanted to only fetch this ID, we can type in OOID because that's the name of the column uh, within the database. And here it would be 1131. And there you go. We got the same result, which is correct. And another great thing, I keep on saying that, you can export what you just filtered into a CSV or a XLSX export file. So if I click on this, you can uh, add your custom delimiter, click on OK. And if I open this up, we can see that within the file, we have everything that we, we had within the grid view. And keep that in mind, every time you try to export, it will always export what you filtered here in the grid view. There are a lot more options of what you can do. It's uh, really insane uh, what they did in PIMCOR with the grid view. It's one of the great features, especially for clients where they out of the box have a great way of formatting the data and viewing the data that they have within the system. And it also provides the developer a way of configuring very complex logic without actually needing to write basically any code. But they covered that as well. If something is really complex, you have a, an operator PHP uh, code. Uh, it basically allows you to call a particular class that you created within your project. And that class will return any sort of data that you need. It receives the object in question. And then from that object, you can fetch maybe its relations or whatever complex logic that you need to do 
to return the data that needs to be in that particular column. Hope the video helped you. And if you want to learn more about PIMCore, you can check out my Udemy course called Learning PIMCore from Zero to Hero, where I will show you all of the steps from creating a project, buying and setting up a server, as well as deploying your project. Hope to see you there.